now that I have had a few years being a successful projector, you know, I can see that enough things have been repeated, enough patterns have been established, enough proof has been proven. <laughs> it's actually kind of a funny way to say that, but like, what is the word there? But I didn't just find out about human design and start experimenting with this and say, oh, this is what a projector is. Okay, this is what they say to do. So I'm gonna go tell other people to do this. No, I've been playing with this. I've been playing with this for years. And I can definitely confidently say I have proven a few things that work and I'm gonna share my tips with you. Okay, here's the first thing that works. Guiding. Guiding works. Working doesn't. <laughs> here's the first thing that works. It's not you. <laughs> you don't work. <laughs> You're not here to work. You're here to guide. What does that mean? And in particular, why are you the only one who can do it? And what I'm really saying is, why can't the other types? This is the business of your aura. What does your aura do? What, how do we even describe the projector aura? Focused, penetrating, grabs the magnetic monopole, grabs it. When we get in there, we get deep to the core. No other aura does that. No other aura is described as penetrative. Nobody else, no other type can grab the magnetic monopole and read the core of somebody like we can. Okay, the second thing that really, really works for us when it comes to work, working with generators and manifesting generators. The projector, the core of what we are here to do is organize energy. And what that really means is organize energy types. Generators, manifesting generators, you are the big, big, big energy type and you are 70% of the population on the planet. That means as projectors, our predominant client base is the dominant client base. If you're a projector and you are here to guide energy types, well, that's mostly gonna be generators and manifesting generators. Occasionally a manifester is gonna to wanna to hire you. They're less than 10% of the population. So don't spend most of your marketing on manifestors. Your primary marketing is for generators because you want them to have a response to your guidance. Lots of us have heard the phrase, work smarter, not harder. Now, if you're a projector and you wanna work smarter, not harder, what we're really saying is work the way a projector would work, work efficiently. Don't work in a way that wastes your energy. That's working harder, as in don't work unnecessarily when you don't need to. Now, the ideal client for a projector is always going to be a generator. When you're a projector working with a sacral being, there's a beautiful mechanical dynamic that was already established for us. With this focused and penetrating aura that's grabbing on to the magnetic monopole and feeding information, what we really get, this feeding information, we're gonna get a feedback loop here. And as I grab on to that monopole, a lot of what I get for information is an understanding of who you are, what you need, what you're attracted to, what satisfies you, what frustrates you, what to ask you about so that you make a noise, so that you recognize your own response, so that you learn who you are. Projectors are here to help generators figure out who they are and what they have a response for. So when we say work smarter, not harder, our most efficient job on the planet is to help the sacral beings figure out who they are, figure out what they have a response for so that they can go put that energy into that correct response rather than wasting that energy on something they didn't have a response for because all that does is create frustration in the Maya. Projectors are only incarnated so that we can help move that along. We're looking for satisfaction. We're looking to rebuild the Maya according to satisfaction. So I'm kind of hoping that a lot of what's landing right now in this projector conversation is that projector business guidance is <laughs> really a lot of future work with sacral beings so that we can work smarter so that we can help them work way more efficiently so that the whole vibe of the planet can eventually become more satisfying. 
That's what projectors are here for. Our work is in guiding. Our work is in guiding the energy types to their correct work. Our real work is in guiding people to get into their right jobs and put their energy where it belongs. Now, all projectors are here to guide, but based on the type of circuitry that you have, you can get more nuanced information for the thematic of your of your guidance. You know, mine as a pure tribal circuitry projector, I'm all about support. Now, if I had a projector who had individual circuitry in them, this one's gonna be all about empowerment. And then again, if I have a projector who's got collective circuitry, now we're sharing. So the key notes for this are gonna be support for tribal, sharing for collective, and empowerment for individuals. And if you're a projector, you can have a variety of circuitry. You can have just one kind, two kinds, three kinds, combinations. But what are, what are you here for? What are you offering? Now, obviously in order to have a business, you have something that helps you make money. You have something that is transactional, which implies that you're selling something. Time with you, an experience with you, a service that you have, an offering. Quantify how you want to. But let's talk about the thing that gets you in the room. The thing that gets you in a room with anybody else should always be an invitation. Projectors do not need invitations for everything, okay? We don't need an, I don't need an invitation to go for a walk by myself. I don't need an invitation to go do things on my own. What the invitation requires is the other. You know, if I'm gonna get into the other, get into, penetrate into the other, I want an invitation. Now, as soon as I get that invitation, it's like the doors blow wide open and my guidance is welcome, right? I'm going to have a lot to pour into that person once the invitation is there. Now also, what I have to pour into that person is based on the quality of the invitation that they gave me. You know, the relationship that I'm about to establish with this person, be it a customer, a client, whatever, it's gonna be based on the quality of how we entered into our working relationship. What kind of recognition was there? I personally have gotten significantly more discerning about what an invitation is, what it means to me, and what quality of an invitation will will get some engagement out of me. You know, there is, there is a dollar figure truly that will not turn my head, will not get my attention. You have to have a level of monetary something to put into the guidance that you're gonna get from me. And what I'm saying there is I don't guide for free. You know, I spent a, a long, long, long time in my life guiding for free. And then I spent a very long time guiding for very little money because I wasn't really hired in the guiding jobs. I was hired in these other jobs where I was just happy to have a job and then I was consistently sought out for my guidance within that role while people seemed to get away with paying me very little or even nothing. And the longer that I've been in business, the better quality of invitation that I require in order for somebody to engage with me. Things that have changed are the amount of money that it costs to work with me. It is a larger investment now than it used to be. Now, there are two other kind of sneakier, but almost like bigger, bigger deal things that changed with my invitations that didn't used to, they didn't, it didn't used to be a, like a principle in my life for operating, especially not in my business. But one thing that changed is I let invitations expire. You know, if somebody invites me, I don't hold the energy of that invitation until they decide to finally follow through. Like for example, if somebody says, I'd like to work with you, I'd like to make a package to work with you, and I, I make them a package and they agree to it and I send them a booking link. If they don't use that booking link and book that package to work with me within a very short period of time, I will go and I will deactivate the link. It, it won't exist for the person to use it. I don't make business arrangements or deals or bargains or accept formal invitations and then just leave them sitting on a shelf for somebody to eventually decide when it's, like that doesn't have enough of an actual invitation in it. That doesn't have enough recognition in it. There's bitterness that's still in that. Just because we made an arrangement 
doesn't mean I'm just gonna hold that, you know? If I don't feel like the person actually values what we're about to do together, then I'll withdraw, you know? I'll say no, I'll cancel it, I'll refund it. I'm not going to hold the energy of an invitation indefinitely. It doesn't work that way. I hold the energy until, honestly, until I feel it go away and then I cancel it. That person would have to re-invite me in order to get back into a working relationship with me. And it used to be really scary to do things like that in my business. It used to feel like, am I pushing business away? Is this gonna upset people? Is this going to... And the only people it pushed away were people that were not good quality clients. They were not high. And when I say high caliber, I mean like, they were not the standard that is waiting to work with me, right? As long as we accept what is a low standard for us, we're never gonna get sent the better thing. We're ne <laughs> Why would the amazing thing show up when we're totally okay to accept less than, you know? It is scary to consistently raise my projector boundaries in my business, but it's only scary in the process of raising them. Once I've actually raised them, you know, Biverse has to meet me where I'm at. It has to raise back in order to interact with me. And then everything gets better. I always notice my success improve when I raise those boundaries. We all need to work according to our authority. I can gloss over this one by saying, yeah, of course you should follow your authority. Of course it's definitely gonna make for more successful business if you're doing strategy and authority. Strategy and authority will lead to the signature. So if you wait to be invited and you follow your authority, then yeah, you should be way more successful. That should be really easy. But with projectors, there are so many authority kinds available to us. You can be a splenic projector. You can be an emotional projector. You can be a self-projected projector. You can go ego-projected projector. You can go <laughs> mental projector. We all have to interact with time in a very different way. Different authorities for different projectors mean different interactions with time and different types of processing. Whatever your way is, however you decide and however you process, it deserves the respect of doing it to the best of what your authority requires. Because I believe that when you do it to the best of what your authority requires, you are truly setting yourself up for the most sustainable, ease-filled, least resistant, successful business you can have. Four years into this journey, it feels really good to be able to share things that have actually helped make my business a genuine success. And I, I like to keep my level of success personal. Personally. But I'm very happy with it. I hope this video helps you find yours.